Section 9.6 is special right triangles. I can use special right triangles to solve problems. A diagonal of a square divides it into two triangles. Each triangle has one 90 degree angle and two 45 degree angles. We call these 45, 45, 90 triangles. So uh, if we have a triangle here, right angle, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, that came from a square because originally this was 90 degrees and we cut it in half. So now each of these is 45 degrees. Originally this was 90 degrees and we cut it in half. So each one is 45 degrees. So we know that because this used to be a square, our side lengths have to be the same if our angle measures are the same. So every single time here, we can find the length of our hypotenuse, our diagonal line there, the longest leg of our triangle, by taking the side length times the square root of two. So whatever our side length is, we take that times the square root of two to get the length of our hypotenuse. In example one, the mat used for floor exercises at a gymnastics competition is a square with a side length of 12 meters. A gymnast starts in one corner of the mat and does a tumbling routine along the diagonal to the opposite corner. So here, uh, starts here for example and goes across to the opposite corner. To the nearest meter, how long is the gymnast's path? And here we know that the side length of our square is 12, all the way around. So uh, we have a square, so our angles were 90 degrees. And now we cut that 90 degrees here in half. So each of these are 45 degrees. So we have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. We can take our side length and multiply it by the square root of two to get our hypotenuse. So 12 squared to two. Now, since we want it to the nearest meter, we're gonna need a decimal approximation here. So I'm gonna take 12 times, remember to get a square root, we take second and then our x squared key on our calculator. Second x squared to get our square root of two. And I'm going to get approximately 16.97. But now to the nearest meter, we look, the 9 rounds that up. And so it's about 17 meters. Keep in mind, guys, here, uh, if you forget this little shortcut, we can still go about this the long way. Uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that's how we find side lengths on a triangle. A and B here are both 12. So 12 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. I get 144 plus 144, which is 288. Now to get rid of my square here, I have to take the square root of both sides. I'm looking for what number did I have to square, and that number is called our square root. So 288 I need to break down. Here's going to be 2 times 144, which is 2 times 72, which is 2 times 36 which is 2 times 18, which is 2 times 9, which is 3 times 3. So I'm going to move over here. I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And all of that is still inside a square root because the square root of 288 was inside a square root. Every pair I can bring out. So I have a pair of 2s, I have another pair of 2s, and I have a pair of 3s. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12 and left inside, I have a square root of two. So I got to the same place doing it the long way, but look at how much extra stuff we had to do to get to here versus just taking our side length times the square root of two. And if you're like, yeah, but I'm never gonna remember that it's a square root of two, here's how I remember. We have two of the same angles, so we have two of the same sides, so I take my side times the square root of two. It comes from a square, so it's the square root of two because two of the same angles. And then we type it in to get our approximate value here. In example two, Mrs. Gregory is buying paving stones to lay along a diagonal path across her square long, which is 17 feet on each side. So again, we have a square here. Pretend that's a square. Each of these is 17. 
and we want the diagonal. So we're going to go from one corner to the other, which means we cut that angle in half, and instead of being 90, now they're 45. And we want to know what is the length of the path, what is the length of this diagonal. So to find our hypotenuse, I can take my side length, and I multiply by the square root of 2. And again, that's because I have a square to start with and two of the same angles. So 17 times the square root of 2 is 24.04. And we want to know to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I look at 4. 4 rounds it down. So I'm going to make it 24.0. And I'm going to put the point 0 to show that I rounded to the nearest tenth. And this is of a foot. So 24.0 feet. And again, we could do it the long way like we did up here if we want to, if we forget. Uh, but if you remember, 17 times the square root of 2. Now, feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. We want to find the unknown lengths. So we're looking for x and for y. And we want our answers in simplest form. So we don't want a decimal approximation. We want these in terms of our exact answer just simplified. So here I have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, which means this originally came from a square. All my sides then are the same, which means if this side is 7, this side has to be 7. So y is 7. Now to find my x value, because this used to be a square and my side length is 7, to find my hypotenuse, my diagonal, my longest leg, I take my side length times the square root of 2. And 7 squared of 2 is my answer. And again, we want our answer in simplest form, not as a decimal approximation. So I leave it as 7 squared of 2. 30, 60, 90 degree triangles are other special triangles. And we get those by taking an equilateral triangle. Let me try that again here. It's a little bit better. And dividing it in half. Uh, remember, equilateral triangles are usually 60, 60, and 60. All of our angles are equal. When I divide it in half, however, this angle stays 60. I didn't change that at all. Here it becomes 90. And here I take that 60 and half it, and I have 30. So a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And we have some special relationships here. The length of the hypotenuse Okay, our diagonal here is twice the length of our shorter side because each of our sides on this equilateral triangle are the same. So if this is 4, for example, that means the other side has to be 4 if I cut it in half. So the whole thing is 8. So each side is 8. So I can take 2 times my shorter leg to get my hypotenuse. We can take the longer leg by taking our shorter leg times the square root of 3. Shorter leg times the square root of 3. And it's got to be our shorter leg here, guys. Uh, and remember, it's got to be your shorter leg by the fact that your hypotenuse has to be your longest leg. So uh, we can't take our hypotenuse and multiply it by the square root of 3 because then it's not the longest leg anymore. It has to stay our longest leg. And I remember that it's a square root of 3 because this is a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. They're all divisible by 3, and I have three different angles. So I take the square root of 3. In example 2 here, I'm going to find the length of x and the length of y. So if I look here, remember this comes from an equilateral triangle. So this side would be x, and my whole base would be x according to my hypotenuse. All of my outside sides should be the same. We cut it in half, so if my base is 8, that means this one was 8 as well. So my whole bottom would be 16, which means x has to be 16. We can take the shorter side length and double it to get our hypotenuse. To get our longer leg, I take my shorter leg and I multiply it by the square root of 3. So here my shorter leg is 8 
and I multiply it by the square root of 3. And that's my final answer. Again, we can't multiply our hypotenuse because our hypotenuse has to be our longest side. If we multiply it by something to make it bigger, it's no longer our longest side. So be careful on that. Feel free to pause here and give this a try if you'd like. We're going to find the unknown lengths and write the answer in simplest form. Here I have x that I'm looking for and y that I'm looking for. If my hypotenuse is 18, again this comes from an equilateral triangle, that means my whole base here would have been 18. So half of that is my x value, 9. Shorter leg is 9 if my hypotenuse is 18. Because remember, 2 times my shorter leg gives me my hypotenuse. Now, to find my longer leg here, y, I take my shorter leg and I multiply it by the square root of 3. And again, if we wanted to, we could do this the long way. I could do 9 squared plus y squared equals 18 squared. 81 plus y squared equals 324. I could subtract and get 243. Take the square root to get rid of my square, and have y equals the square root of 243. Keep in mind, though, we have to break that down to reduce it. So the square root of 243 is the same as the square root of 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. I can take pairs out. So I have a 3 for my first pair and a 3 for my second pair. So 3 times 3 is 9, and I have 1 square root of 3 left on the inside. So I get 9 square root of 3 the same way as I did up there. So if you want to go the long way because you don't remember or you aren't sure, go for it. Uh, but we'll get to the, the same place if we remember our shortcut. Shorter leg times the square root of 3, and that's to get our longer leg. And our hypotenuse is twice our shorter leg. An example 3 here, same idea. We're looking for x and we're looking for y. I have my shorter leg, so to find my hypotenuse, I can take my shorter leg times 2, and x is going to be 12. To find my longer leg, I take my shorter leg times the square root of 3. And again, I remember that by having three different angles that are all divisible by 3. 30, 60, 90. So square root of 3. Uh, again, if we wanted to, we could do this the long way, 6, 12, and y, so a, b, and c. Um, but if we don't have to, we might as well work smarter instead of harder. So 30, 60, 90, to find our long leg, our short leg times the square root of 3, to find our hypotenuse, 2 times our shorter leg. And that's all I have for section 9.6.